the Civil War, exchanging slavery for freedom and the Union. The American Civil War was a civil war in the United States fought between the Union and the Confederacy. The cause of the war was the status of slavery, especially the expansion of slavery into territories acquired because of the Louisiana Purchase and the Mexican-American War. In the 1860s, Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln's exploration of different ideas led to the Civil War. Here, they exchanged slavery for freedom in the Union. The North pushed the idea of abolishing slavery and saving the Union, while the South aimed for a new nation keeping slavery and destroying the Union. Two parties were desperate to consume more state as each party wanted dominance over each other in the Congress. The war ended with the Union winning which led to reconstruction. Before the Civil War, Northern and Southern development followed increasingly different paths. By 1860, the North contained 50% more people than the South. It was more urbanized and attracted more European immigrants. The Northern economy was more diversified into agricultural, commercial, manufacturing, financial, and transportation sectors. In contrast, the South has smaller and fewer cities and a third of its population lived in slavery. In the South, slavery impeded the development of industry in cities and discouraged technological innovation. Nevertheless, the South was wealthy and its economy was rapidly growing. The Southern economy largely financed the Industrial Revolution in the United States and sim stimulated the development of industries in the North to service Southern agriculture. However, their pursuit and exploration of different ideologies led to conflict. For 40 years, attempts were made to resolve conflicts between North and South. The Missouri Compromise restricted slavery in the northern half of the Louisiana Purchase. The acquisition of vast new territories during the 1840s reignited the question of slavery in the Western Territories. The Compromise of 1850 was an attempt to solve this problem by admitting California as a free state but allowing slavery in the rest of the Southwest. But the Compromise included a fugitive slave law opposed by many Northerners. The Kansas-Nebraska Act proposed to solve the problem of status thereby popular sovereignty. But this led to violent conflict in Kansas and the rise of the Republican Party. The Dred Scott decision eliminated possible compromise solutions to the sectional conflict and John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry convinced many Southerners that most Northerners wanted to be free the slavery and incite race war. As conflicts advanced, the war between the Union and the Confederates started. In 1862, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. It opened the door for African Americans to serve in the military. At the time, nearly 10% of the Union Army was African American. Although they were accepted as soldiers, they still suffered from discrimination. They served in separate regiments and assigned to labor duties commanded by white officers. The life for them was not easy. They were likely to catch typhoid, pneumonia, malaria, and other deadly diseases. The life for African American prisoners were not well during the encounter of the two forces. The Confederacy would not treat captured African American soldiers as prisoners of the war. Many were executed on the spot. The ones who were not killed were returned to slavery. And some southern plantation owners fled before approaching Union troops. Many slaves refused to be dragged along. The southerners came out with the counterpart too. They tightened slave patrols and spread rumors about how Union soldiers abused runaways. But this did not stop the salt of freedom for the slaves. The war had different impacts on the two regions. The South had a decline of the plantation system, and the Confederacy faced food shortage. While the South was suffering from the war, the North had an economic growth. The Army's need for uniforms, shoes, guns, and other supplies supported the woolen mills, steel foundries, coal mines, and many other industries. Many historians agree that the July 3rd infantry charge was the turning point of the Civil War, which was part of a three-day battle at Gettysburg. The battle crippled the South so badly that the General of the Confederacy, General Lee, would never again possess sufficient forces to invade a Southern state. In November 1863, a ceremony was held to dedicate a cemetery in Gettysburg, which Lincoln delivered the speech, the Gettysburg Address. According to Lincoln, he addressed that 
This nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Two sides arranged a confederate surrender on April 9, 1865, in a Virginia village called Appomattox Courthouse. Within two months all remaining, Confederate resistance collapsed. One of the instant impacts of the Civil War would be Reconstruction during 1865 to 1867. Major events included the Reconstruction Act and the 13th to 15th Amendments, which had significantly exchanged slavery for freedom. Reconstruction had focused on interracial democracy. New laws and amendments were established for purpose of hoping black and white communities would join together. Reconstruction Act has set serious conditions for Southern states which wanted to join the Union. President Andrew Johnson wanted to be lenient. However, he received opposition from the Red Cross Republicans which was an anti-slavery organization. They insisted to gain new rights by passing the 14th Amendment, which was for the purpose of equal rights for all citizens, especially in, for including African Americans. New ideas and rights were drastically presented by the 13th and 15th Amendments. 13th Amendment delivered the idea of highlighting the importance of abolishing slavery. Although slavery was abolished by Congress in 1862 and 1863, it was still a problem in a few former Confederate states after the war had ended. Therefore, the 13th Amendment required new states also abolish slavery as one of the conditions to join a union. To further diminish unequal treatments for African American community, 14th Amendment was established and expected all persons can be treated equally no matter what skin color they have or whether they were enslaved in the past. Radical Republicans, together with other supportive citizens, this amendment was finally passed on July 9, 1868. The 15th Amendment was passed with the purpose of giving all citizens the right to vote. This amendment prohibits the states from not letting citizens vote based on their skin color or the fact that they were enslaved. In order to further protect African American citizens rights, this amendment was established and had protected African Americans' rights for decades as it aimed for. Civil War also emerged the idea of civil rights, and one of its purposes is to exchange mistreatments to equal rights. Civil rights movement against segregation, its roots were in centuries ago from enslaved Africans. The 14th and 15th Amendments has set a foundation for civil rights. However, racism continues. Martin Luther King Jr. as the most influential African American civil rights leader was best known for his speech, I Have a Dream. He stood up for anti-segregation. The speech, I Have a Dream, which was delivered on August 28, 1963, demanded equal justice for all citizens under the law. Furthermore, the U.S. celebrates the Juneteenth Day every June 19th. This is a federal holiday to celebrate the emancipation of African American slaves ever since 1865. In 1863, on January 1st, Abraham Lincoln established Emancipation a Proclamation as saying that all slaves were, were freed except for those who were in Texas or other Confederate states. However, after the 13th Amendment was established, all slaves in America were freed, and people started a Juneteenth celebration in the same year. One of the celebratory traditions would be reading the Emancipation Proclamation. To summarize, Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln's exploration of different ideas, exchangement of slavery for freedom and the Union, and deadly encounters in the battlefields led to a devastating war. The war had utterly devastated the South and posed serious questions of how the South would be reintegrated to the Union. The war destroyed much of the wealth that had existed in the South. All accumulated investment Confederate bonds were forfeit. Most banks and railroads bank were bankrupt. The income per person in the South dropped to less than 40% of that of the North, a condition that lasted until well into the 20th century. Southern influence in the U.S. federal government previously considered was greatly diminished until the latter half of the 20th century. Reconstruction began during the war, with the Emancipation Proclamation of January 1, 1863, and it continued until 1877. It compromised multiple complex methods to resolve the outstanding issue of the war's aftermath, the most important of which were the three Reconstruction Amendments to the Constitution, the 13th outlawing slavery, the 14th guaranteeing citizenship to slaves, and the 15th ensuring voting rights to slaves. From the Union perspective, the goals of Reconstruction were to consolidate the Union victory on the battlefield by reuniting the Union, to guarantee a Republican form of government for the ex-Confederate states and to permanently end slavery and prevent semi-slavery status. The causes of the war, the reasons for its outcome, and even the name of the war itself are subjects of lingering topics today. The North and West grew rich while the once rich South became poor for a century. The national political power of the slave owners and rich Southerners ended.